Hi guys and welcome back to EV Reviews. Now what I have here today is something quite interesting. It's shit multibit. And some of you have been asking for its review for quite some time now, so finally here it is. And uh, what's interesting about it is, to my knowledge, it's probably the cheapest multibit DAC on the market currently. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that, most of the DACs, like Topping D30 and all other toppings basically, or Yerman one that you can he see here, they're based on Delta Sigma DA chips, which basically do one bit at a time conversion, but this one does multiple bits at once. But I don't want to bother you with technical info and construction that much, because to me that's really not important. What matters is the result and the final sound quality that you get from it. I just wanted to, to say that because you should know it's not based on any familiar Sabre, AK or whatever DA chip that you usually see in other products. That said, let's move to its build and functions. And as you can see, it looks exactly the same as shit Modi 3. Well, not exactly the same because uh, instead of switch, there is a button that is quite clicky and it allows you to change one of three inputs on the back. And talking about inputs, as you can see, um, there is USB one, optical, and coaxial connection. And the biggest difference probably uh, from Modi 3 is that USB input is this time full size USB B connector. And I really like that because first of all, they're more durable and more sturdy than micro USB connections. Secondly, um, for example, I'm having some decent USB cables around the house of a decent quality and I like to be able to use them on all of my DACs without having to look for micro USB one and uh, yeah it's it's just more convenient and I think more practical to have the full size one. Other than that nothing unusual really here as you can see there is a switch and yeah one more thing actually that is interesting is you can maybe read it here. It says 16 VAC for power supply. What this means is actually you don't feed it with DC voltage as most of the DACs on the market. And that also means you cannot use traditional linear power supplies and such because all of them provide DC current. But this one takes AC from Shit's own wall worth and it actually converts it to DC inside of the case itself. And shit says it's 100% linear power supply inside. Um, and that's actually nice because you don't have to worry about upgrading it and spending some more money to make it sound better, which I usually do for most of the decks, but this one has linear power supply already bundled inside of the case itself. Okay, so let me quickly connect it and turn it on. So this will actually be interesting because you can see when turned on, it takes some time to power up. And like 15 seconds later, you're able to choose your input and use it. And that's basically it. There are no advanced functions. There is no digital filter choice or anything like that. It's just a simple plain DAC. You turn it on, you use it, that's it. And um, build quality feels nice as with all shit products. It's quite weightier than Modi 3. I guess part of the reason is probably because of this included linear power supply here with takes some space. And just one last thing before I move to sound quality, which is really important to mention, is that I purchased this unit just a few weeks ago, which means this is a shit multibit version two. And I think this version started uh, 
to be sold around 2018 or something like that. Basically, it's the same multibit as it always was. What actually changed is firmware and programming. And you cannot do that by just updating it from your PC. Um, but Sheet provided a way uh, you can order a completely new memory chip. It's 35 bucks with new firmware and digital filtering programming on it. And you can just open it, change the old one if you have the older multibit. And basically that's it. You get version two improvements. This is important, why? Because early multibits that I haven't heard by many impressions had a little bit of fatty bass and a little bit of mumbly upper bass region. I'm glad to say it's really not the case with this one, but that actually leads me to its sound quality, so let's start talking about that. Now, first thing that you'll notice when you start using it is the boldness of its mid-range region. And when I say boldness, I really mean that mid-range sounds bold and thick. Now, about other uh, frequency regions, bass is just simply really good. It goes deep, is quite well controlled, it's firm and there's plenty of texture and resolution inside of the bass compared to any deck of this at this price point. Now, I really feel that those complaints about too thick and too fatty bass line from early versions of Multibit are not relevant anymore because that's definitely not happening with this version. Higher range, everything's there. There's a lot of details, but it's presented in a slightly toned down and laid back fashion. When you come from a Delta Sigma deck, like for example, Topping E30, at the first moment, first few songs, you feel that uh, multibit sounds a little bit rolled off in the upper range. But when you start listening it for a longer time, you actually realize that none of the information is really lost. Uh, every detail is still there, but it's just a little bit toned down and laid back. And those higher frequencies have the similar thing going on for them as I explained for mid-range. And that's some sort of thickness and fullness that is really pleasant to the ear. And I don't want to dissect more into frequency region, but I actually want to explain how it sounds and how it makes you feel when you actually listen to it. Now, as I mentioned, that sort of boldness to the mid-range and even higher frequencies gives a very typical sound signature to multibit that you don't hear often. And what surprised me the most is that that sort of boldness and thickness does not mean only that the frequency response, like bass is elevated and upper bass is elevated, but also you have a sense of spatial boldness. And I'll try to explain, explain it this way. When you, for example, listen to um, any instruments that does not only have tiny sharp detail, but also a body to it, for example, a lower note on a guitar, there is that sharp pluck of a string, but there is also a body of a note happening beside them, that echo of a guitar chamber and things like that. And multibit does that really great. That mid-range fullness gives the impression that all of the tones that you are hearing simply have more body and more spatial thickness to them. And that's something that really sounds pleasant and realistic. Um, for example, just Let's just take a simple thing like knocking on a wooden box like this. Now you can hear that's a tone that has a lot of body to it, not much sharpness. And Multibit does this thing with a note body, 
better than basically any other deck that I heard near this price range. And if your musical notes were pillows, it's like that feeling when your pillows have just been fluffed. So they're really nice and plump. And that's definitely the biggest impression that multibits give away. Aside from that, there's quite decent soundstage. Wit is just normal, I would say, it's average. It's not bigger than any other good deck at this price point. But regarding depth, I definitely feel there's more to it than your average Delta Sigma deck out there. And as you can see, I really liked it. I love listening music through it. But are there any downsides to its sound and to its sound signature? Well, it depends how you feel about it and your personal taste and the rest of your system, basically. So, for example, something like Topping E30 here, it's definitely brighter and sharper sounding in high frequencies and with transients. And, but in comparison, it definitely sounds more flat. Um, more flat and more compressed spatially than multibit. This one, as I explained, is like sound just got fluffed and it has more body, more depth to it. You definitely feel like you could easily walk inside the soundstage and make a circle around a performer. That's something you can not do with this one because it's really detailed, but its soundstage, it's much more in one plane. Um, you see into it, you hear a lot of details, but it simply does not have that thing of dimensionality of individual notes like this one has. Purely from a technical standpoint, I would say, for example, that um, this one sounds a little bit padded, a little bit rolled off. For example, there are annoying noises in the real world. For example, if you were to take a spoon and hit like a thin metal sheet with it, it would make like really high pitched annoying sound. And I definitely feel that something like E30 or this one, Earman TR amp, it's a great deck slash amp and very detailed, very precise. Those two would definitely make that sharp, annoying metal noise more realistic to my ears. This one will simply make it a little bit padded and a little bit warmer, which is often more pleasant to listen to. But you know, in real life, there are sounds that are not pleasant to be listened, like uh, metal scratching, glass breaking, thing, things like that. But when you actually go down to mid-range, this one takes the lead, in my opinion, and it definitely sounds more realistic. As I mentioned before, like knocking sounds, for example, if you knock on a wood or if you knock on anything, you have that body that goes with that tone. This one simply sounds more lifelike, bolder, with more dimension to the notes. And that's interesting because if you put it that way, in a purely technical manner, it sounds like these are doing something better, this one is doing something else better, it's a draw. But in reality, I don't feel like it. I definitely feel that this is a better deck for listening to the music, because most of the instruments and most of the notes uh, most of the things we actually enjoy in the music is located in the mid-range. And that sort of fullness, that sort of um, easily determining dimensionality of something and color of something, is it like a plastic, wood, leather, things like that, color and timber of a tone, that's, in my opinion, bringing more to the music than these sharp highs and sharp trans transients does. During these days I had it with me, I had few visitors coming, listening to my system. 
I switched between different decks and basically it was unanimous. Almost everybody preferred listening music through multibit. And people without much hi-fi vocabulary would just say it sounds more lifelike and more present. It's bigger, bolder and better. And I agree with them. It sounds like that to me too. And I'm going to tell you now that I'm going to keep it and use it in my system. I simply like it more than any other deck I'm currently having at my home. Oh, and just one more thing before we finish. I, I feel this is really important to mention. Right out of the box, shit multibit sounds pretty bad. Now, I know a lot of you simply don't believe in burn-in period, and with most of decks, it's negligible. Even if it's there, it's barely noticeable. For example, I had um, my E30 working for a few weeks with completely new E30 side by side. I could, I was able to detect small differences, but those were basically not important. You couldn't notice that without directly comparing them. But with multibit here, when I first connected it, it sounded very compressed. Like extension on both ends were lacking. No deep bass, no atmosphere, in, no, no really high frequencies. And those high frequencies that I could hear were grainy. So everything was basically mid-range centric and quite compressed, quite mumbly. At that moment, choosing between it and E30, I would say like, E30 easily. It's just wider, more spacious, better sounding back. But just give it a day or two, that's all it took for me, and it starts to spread its wings. It gets smoother, grain goes away, bass depth appears, high frequency extension gets much better. So just give it a day or two before you decide to return it back to shit. Please do it for me, even if you don't believe in burning, because it's one of the most severe cases of burning that I ever heard in my life. I don't know if it has something with multi-bit technology itself or not, but it's there. Another thought, um, I heard that it works best when it's warm and that you should never turn it off. But I actually wanted to test that, so I just last night I turned it off overnight in the morning, when I woke up, I switched it on. I listened several songs, but honestly, I couldn't notice any important degradation of sound at that moment. It's only that initial out-of-the-box burning period that is really severe. And I simply feel that reports about importance of not switching it off were just a little bit exaggerated, at, at least to my ears and to my opinions. And that said, I think it's time to finish this video. I'll be making sound demos between Multibit and D30 and maybe something else, I'll, I'll decide that later. But as the review goes, we are done. I really liked it. I, I like its full meaty presentation. I love that they included linear power supply inside of it. And basically all comparison I made today were made between Multibit with its own power supply and E30 with linear power supply, as well as Earman TR amp with its own battery supply. And in my opinion, that brings even better value to the table because um, you're getting all in one package. That's simple to use, sounds great, it's a really great offer for the money, in my opinion. So, that would be all for today, guys. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and you would like to support the channel, please click like and subscribe, and also visit my website for written reviews with scores. See you next time.